Hey guys, what's up? Today I don't have any intro for you, but instead we'll go right into the tutorial. Today we're gonna make this stylized smoke effect in Blender. And before we start, as always, the blend file is in the description on my Gumroad for free. And now let's get into the tutorial. Also, I wouldn't mind if you subscribed, you know we're trying to hit that 1000 subscribers, so feel free to do that as well. So in the fresh Blender file, delete everything and make sure that you have a Node Wrangler enabled. Go to Edit Preferences, Add-ons and search for Node Wrangler and make sure that it's enabled. Because we're gonna use it extensively in the shading editor. Now because this stylized smoke is based entirely on particle effects and not a simulation, we will need our particle. So let's click Shift A and add a metaball ball. Now if you don't have a super strong computer, I suggest you go to this metaball settings and bump the resolution viewport to something like 1. Because when we will spawn the particles then it may get a little bit laggy if you're using an older system. But if you have a confidence in your hardware then you can just keep it at default. And now with the metaball selected let's drag in a new viewport and change it to shader editor. Click N to get rid of the ribbon and click new to create a new material. Now let's delete the principled BSDF and now add a emission transparent BSDF and a mix shader. Now connect it like so, the transparent on top, emission on the bottom and the factor is gonna be the mask that we'll create just now. Let's start with a noise texture and if you have enabled the node wrangler simply click ctrl T to get the texture coordinate and mapping node as well. Now change the texture coordinate from generated to object and add another value node to control the scale instead of three values we have just one. Keep it at one and add a mix RGB node. Now let's make a little bit more space in here and now in this viewport we can go to the render preview and we can also preview the noise texture. So this noise texture it doesn't look exactly like what we want we need to adjust those values a little bit because we want this smoky look let's change the scale to one so it looks very blurry right now bring down the roughness all the way down and change the distortion to something like one not too crazy now this is super basic but we can make it look a little bit better by giving this noise texture a little bit more distortion and in order to do that we can directly distort the vector value that goes into our noise texture so let's connect it to the mix rgb node and let's duplicate this noise texture so we have an extra noise to this Distort the vector width, connect the color to the second color of the mix RGB, change the mix to linear light, and then the result let's connect to our noise texture. Now, as you can already see, it changed the result a little bit, and now as you play with the factor in our noise RGB, you can see that it's getting affected by this noise more and more. In order to visualize it, you can preview the mix RGB node, and as you can see, the coordinates are being distorted by this noise. So when you play with the scale here, for example, you can see that the distortion is more and more intense. But let's keep the values quite low because remember we are going for the smoky look so just a little distortion is gonna be enough and you can always come back to it and change it later. So now with this simple setup done we can already move and spawn our particles and then come back later for further adjustments. So let's move this particle aside. Let's also name it a single particle because that's what it is. Now let's create an object that you want these particles to be emitted from. So I recommend something small if you're going also for this smoke trail effect. So let's make a sphere, let's scale it down quite a bit and then here in the particle properties tab let's click this plus button to create a new particle system. Now first thing we need to do is go to the render tab and change the render as from halo to object and then in this list let's choose the single particle that we just created. Now let's also change the scale to 1 and as you click play you should see the particles being spawned from your emitter. Now as you can see it looks more like a water or a sludge so we need to tweak few more values to make it look nice. So let's pause it for now and first let's go down to the field weights and turn the gravity all the way down because we don't want the smoke to be affected by the gravity at all. Now another thing on the very top let's bump the lifetime a little bit so that our particles can hang around for longer. This lifetime is expressed in frames, so in this case the lifetime of a single particle is gonna be 80 frames on our animation timeline. Let's also put the frame start to minus 80, so that when we start on the frame 1, we already have a pre-warmed particle system with particles already being spawned. And also the end, when the last particle should be spawned, let's set it to 250 because that's by default the end of our animation right here. So we just want the particles to always be present as we're working on it. So as you can see the smoke starts already looking nice but because it's smoke it should also be transparent right? So let's click on this M ball, the single particle, go to the material properties and change the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend. Now in our shader let's add a color ramp, plug it right after the noise texture, let's move those a little bit to make more space and then this color ramp let's change the interpolation from linear to be spline. It will give us this much much softer gradient from black to white. And then the result of the color ramp goes straight into mix shader factor. And now as we preview the mix shader node, you should have the smoke where you can actually see through the object. We can actually add 
another object to check whether it works. So even though the monkey is clearly inside you can still see the silhouette. But now let's make our particle system behave like a smoke. Because right now if you click the sphere which is the particle emitter, by the way it's a good practice to always name your things. So if we grab the emitter and then we move it around you can see that the particles don't really behave like a smoke. But they are not even being spawned as you move them around the scene. I'm not entirely sure why it happens but in order to fix that we can simply parent the emitter to an empty object. So shift A add a empty it can be plane axis and then with the plane axis selected let's shift and add select the emitter and then look for parent object and in this way you should see that the empty actually now has the emitter under it. So as you move the empty around the particles still being spawned from the emitter but it's not getting reset and you have this a trail effect already. So right now that we have this base particle setup we can go back to our shader and refine how the smoke looks like. First of all let's go all the way back to this value which controls the scale of our noise that's being applied on the meta balls and bring it all the way down down to maybe something like 0.2 which already improves the look of it by so much but another great thing that almost always improves the look of a shader is an animation so let's try to animate our noise texture first of all let's change it from 3d to 4d remember to work on the noise texture that's after the mix rgb not the one that is deforming our vector and now right here in this w value which is the seed of our noise texture as you can see when we are moving it then the smoke is ge getting all altered all the time. So in order to keep it changing as the animation progresses on the timeline we have to give it a driver and in order to do that simply type in hashtag frame which is gonna take the current frame that the animation is on and then in order to not make it move so fast we can divide it by something like let's say 15 and as you can see that the smoke is getting altered as well. Now to further enhance this effect we can do the exact same thing in this noise texture so change it to 4d and then in the w value type in hashtag frame and then let's divide it by a little bit different number maybe like 20 and that will give it a little bit more complexity to the dynamically changing smoke on our scene. Now if you feel like it's moving too fast or too slow you can always change those numbers. The bigger the number the slower the animation will progress. Now because it's stylized smoke we can add a little bit of stylized detail to it as well using a Fresnel node. So simply type in Fresnel and then let's get a math node and let's see what the Fresnel node does. So if you preview it as it is and let's pause it for a little bit and also if you have these artifacts as I do you can simply click backface calling for now because for some reason if it doesn't handle it that well when you have it disabled and what that does is basically it prevents you from seeing the faces behind our surface even though it's supposed to be transparent. So now as we are previewing our Fresnel node you can see that it highlights the edges of our geometry. I know this explanation is not very scientific so I recommend you just google uh, Fresnel and then you can read all about it. But for this tutorial it's important to know that the outer edge is highlighted and the inside is quite transparent. So with that information let's move it right here and then change the math node to power and so what power does is as we increase the exponent it refines the gradient of our node. So what we want now is we want to see only the edges highlighted but the areas in the middle we want them to stay black. So let's just play with this a little bit to get the nice result. We don't want these edges to be too sharp as well so maybe like 2 is a quite a good number I think. And now to make sure that the black values are actually zero and not negative values we can also check clamp which is gonna make sure that the range of these values in here is not gonna exceed zero and one. And now let's add another math node and plug it right after power. And then the second input is gonna be our color ramp right here. Change the function from add to subtract and also make sure that the color ramp is plugged on top of the subtract node because we want to subtract these highlighted edges from the overall mask that we get before. And so the result should look something like this. And now let's plug the results to our mix shader factor instead of the color ramp and also select clamp to make sure that we don't have any negative values. And the result should look something like this. So if we compare it to the previous one you can see that we had those harsh edges but right now after subtracting those, those edges it gives us this, this feather, this, this nice blurry gradient as it disappears into the air. And we can further adjust that by simply playing with this power exponent. So as you increase it the edges get sharper and sharper but as you go down you have those softer and softer looks. So I'll keep it as two but you can do whatever you want. And now in order to change the color of the smoke you can simply change it in the emission node right down here. So let me change it to something greenish 
maybe something like a toxic cloud. And because it's supposed to be smoke, you can keep the emission strength at 1 and you also don't have to enable bloom. But if you want it to be shiny, then we can try that as well. But in my opinion, emission strength 1 does the job perfectly. Now the shader work is already finished, you can adjust the look of it with the values of the noise texture or add some custom stuff to it, whatever you wish. But we can now enlarge the viewport and the rest of the work is gonna be done through the particle systems. So the problem we have now is, as you can see, when we move the empty, then the particles just, just disappear as they reach the end of their life cycle. So in order to make them disappear more smoothly and gradually instead of just abruptly disappearing, we can go into the emitter and then particle settings again scroll all the way down until the texture tab open it up and then click new now go to the texture settings and open the influence tab and uncheck the general time and check the size so that this texture that we're gonna create right here is gonna only affect the size of our particles let's change the type from image or movie to blend and scroll all the way down in mapping change the coordinates from generated to strand particle now open colors check the color ramp open it up and click here and bring the alpha all the way up so that we have this nice black to white gradient. You can see this gradient as a lifetime of our particles and then the values on it are gonna be the values of the size of our particles. So it's gonna start as zero, so very small, then it grows to one, so the full size particle, then it stays one for the majority of its life and then as it's gonna die down, we want it to disappear smoothly into the size zero again. So we can start moving the empty around and as you can see that the particles appearing and disappearing, the whole process is just much more smooth than before. And then that will conclude the whole tutorial. Now I encourage you that you go into the particle settings yourself and just play with all the values that you can find in here and just try to discover as many cool results as you can. So like play with the velocity, the, ro the, the rotation, the physics, go crazy with it and I promise you, you will have some happy accidents and a result that you will actually fall in love with. And so when it happens, please let me know on Twitter. The link to my account is on the description. I would really love to see your creative vision and the applications that you found for the effect that you learned here. And so yeah, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and see you in the next one. Bye bye!